didn't see enough dick bit in the film. It? <laughs> it was a wonderful character to create. They all were. Um, it was an interest. It was like I said, the whole world was built four feet off the ground. So you know, former suits you sort of saw there. They're always down here like this, looking at a monitor, which the camera's going to see. And so it was always a challenge to move one of the characters or two of the characters from one side to the other. It's it's. Great fun. It's a wonderful problem to have, um, but still a problem, <laughs> especially when you've got all those people beneath. Because each puppet took um, a, two people to operate at least. Um, they always have one in the puppet and then one controlling when they blink or the, the the brows and stuff like that, surrounding them and moving with them in time. Um, the spider that you saw itself was eight people, and they cut everything out. <laughs> A lot of green screen. Uh, there was the whole King set was shot against green screen, and uh, the pillars. Um, we built we built four pillars, and then we photographed them all, and then we used duplicates and multiples for afterwards. But had the pillars and the, the main King part on screen against green screen, um, and then we also shot cloud plates. We we did we did the old techniques of um, paint in water. We wanted to keep it practical, and so we got those elements practically, and then we married them together. And I think um, it, it just it, it works. It's sort of this wonderful, strange, you know, storm that we created. So it was also a lot of fun to do, and many different techniques we used. So, yeah. Um, any questions? <laughs> Anything you'd like to know at all about? Can you uh, tell us a little bit about the figures around here? Are these cast from the same originals, or are these the puppets? These are the puppets. These are the puppets. These are absolutely the puppets. Yeah, this is uh, this is Digby in all his glory. Um, this is uh, yeah. We used we had extra skins, um, but these they're all the same. Oh yeah, I used gorilla tape. <laughs> you know that stuff. Um, so these these puppets are um, yeah are the ones we use. They I I had extra head pieces, so the all the, the the skins can technically come off if you can unglue them, unstick them, um, and put them back on. The mechanics underneath will stay. You can get into the heads behind to fix mechanics, which they did break. They, they, that's that's one thing with all these things is they do break. They they do have to be fixed <laughs> time and time again. Um, but uh, for all worth, actually, these are the original skins. We didn't actually have to change out the heads ever. They, the puppeteers were amazing with them. And the boy was put through a, a lot <laughs> to go through. And they are, but they're, they're great fun. They really are. Is it foam rubber? Foam rubber. Um, and yeah, foam, foam rubber on the inside and, and soft bodies, soft foam just for flexibility and movability. And <laughs> um, yes, very squishable, and the bodies are squishable. They are, you know, it was important to be able to move them around, move and and to be able to not have to be precious. With them. The faces are the most delicate part because they'll tear, you know, in certain ways. They are. <laughs> you can see that they just really come to life. They're just so much fun to do. Um, but yes, so it's all squish and all that. And that was the nice thing. That's the reason, um, even though I cry for most of the labyrinth, um, <laughs> but the reason I could be around them um, and the reason I was crying was never because of these. Um, they were squishy. I squished their noses. I played with the goblins. I played with the puppeteers. Um, and we'd have a great time. The reason I'm crying is for all the other reasons. So the music was far too loud. Um, whenever, you, whenever they did the dance magic scene um, and they shouted action, the music would blare, I'd crank up, and I'd jump, and I'd be scared. And uh, they never changed that. Um, I was crying in the crib because, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, because it wasn't my nap time. So I'm okay. <laughs> Even though I watch it now and I go, oh, no. My father was he like, oh, no, it's horrible, it's terrible. But no, uh, that's why these, the puppets are fun, they're, they're durable, and they, you know, 
you want them as flexible and movable as possible. You know, you want to lift as little as you can. Just to be able to get all sorts of range of movement. And then you would always have the other person behind, you know, making them <laughs> so um, it was a team effort, it really was. It was an amazing group of people that came together and built these things. Yeah, <laughs> there you are. Do all the puppets have the same amount of controls inside? Uh, no, the, the king has none. Uh, he is just a, a hand puppet in this way. Um, the boy and grandfather have the most for the blink, brow, um, and ear movement. Um, the spider lady has wiggling eyes, they never really shot on screen very well, but they, they do move, they sort of move around strangely. And so he has a link and a brow. I, I chose the different things for different reasons of what they needed to do, and the boy needed to do the most, you know, emote with his ears and doing shock and surprise, and we got a lot more mileage out of him with that one. I did have, I have a whole other head that does pure surprise of him, so, you know, he does the ears right now, but we never needed to necessarily use it. It was always, it was a potential, it was an idea, and I wanted to be, I wanted to make sure I was covered in that way. So, it's better to be covered, because the puppets, puppets, the, or the magic of puppets is they do one thing, maybe. <laughs> you know, they do very little, usually, and uh, the one thing is usually just being able to look around, maybe open a mouth and, and move. And you get anything else out of it, and it's magic, but it, it takes a lot, you know, it takes that, that little bit extra to do. And, um, and then they tend to break, but, you know, the, the magic is when you see on screen or you see a puppet, it doesn't do much. <laughs> it, is just, it is just what it is, it's alive, it's the character that you bring out, and, and that's the part. So with the mouth, are there solid pellets in there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mean. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, it's a hard, hard palette from the inside, um, hard rubber sort of material. Yeah. How long from the time you said yes to? Mm -hmm. Um, it was the time I said yes, and then I went away and wrote the thing. I then did a Kickstarter. I think it was last um, July. I ran a Kickstarter to to fund um, the filming of the whole thing, and. Uh, from then on, it's taken, and that's when I started building. I started building Digby uh, a month before the Kickstarter, in June, until April, so about 10, 10 and a half months. And that was, and that was with us having day jobs and um, being able, having to satellite people because we were all in different places doing different things. Um, we came together and built the sets, and most of the most of the bodies and the costumes are over two and a half months. Um, I, went, I rented a warehouse space. I wanted to build and shoot in the same space. So we had complete access to everything. Um, and the people who were building helped film the whole thing. So we all knew everything really well. And that was the best part about it. So two and a half months of building and then eight days of shooting completely. Four, four and a half days of principal shooting with the puppeteers. That's, you know, the time you, you bring puppeteers in or you can get them to do things and then you send them out and we do all the technical bits or the, or the other shots that <laughs> had to go on. And we, it was three major sets that we did. We did the grandfather scene and then the file room scene and then the king's set. There were three, three sections that we were able to pull apart and maneuver around in, in all different ways. So it was very exciting. Yes. So uh, when you started, I know you probably had to pull together concept art other than the initial idea. Um, how long did that whole process take and how many people were involved in it? Um, the, I, wrote, I wrote a treatment for it and then I actually had um, a, a wonderful writer and dear friend, uh, Scott Woodard, whose wife actually made the costumes, um, mm -hmm. certainly the boy and everyone me um, the costume for this, we worked together. So he did a uh, script treatment on the comic. And then I had my, my mother, Wendy Fred, who is actually a writer as well. Um, and she's great with, with words and dialogue, I feel. So she came and did a dialogue class, and she really, she gave a lot of meaning to a certain, certain areas of the film, and it was wonderful. It was a great collaboration in that way, early on, to work on. Um, at the time, I was then doing 
um, sketches and designs for the three points of the film, I call them, you know, the, the grandfather, the father, and the king's set. And it was, I would do that and I would, um, I always told myself I don't draw, I can't draw, because my father draws, and <laughs> does it very well. And I've never, I've never necessarily done that, but I, I loved it because I was forced to. I had to, I had to show people what I wanted to do. I had to show people what I needed to um, convey, you know, in a film sense. And I did drawings, sketches, many designs, certainly for Digby, and then maquettes. I did little posable maquettes, and uh, and that's where it all began because people got to see that the world and the color and the beginnings of it. And then I built him, and we got, I got him built with. Um, the help of two others, and uh, this is how we ran the Kickstarter, as we showed a, a test of him moving um, just outside in natural light. And it, I think, for me, that was the moment I said, well, I think I can do it. I think this can be done again, you know, uh, for what we want to do. Because that's the challenge, is bringing characters to the screen and making them look believable. I want to believe. I want to believe in something that I'm seeing, and I and I, I know the audience does too, so that was, that was the challenge, that was the breaking, that was the point that it turned for me, and it was the challenge of getting to that, you know, getting to a point where I thought, all right, yeah, these, are, these will be fun, these will be fun to do. Um, so, I mean, uh, two months, I'd say, from doing, from doing that, but it was, it was collaborative all the way, it really was. And I was still, um, I was still directing it, or production designing it, through uh, you know through the build and everything like that, which was great. I was able to give people references and reference materials and sort of a general idea of what I wanted, and then they could go and run with it. You know, people would come and build certain bits and make certain things for me that was fantastic because all these people were artists and and wanted to be creative, and so I was hopefully trying to give them that at least you know to to be a part of some things in that way. Yeah. What's your day job? My day job, um, I'm, a, I'm a sculptor for Leica. Mm. We do uh, the box trolls came out. So I was a sculptor on that. And uh, we, I, I, I sculpt the characters, the puppets, and uh, do body sculpts and hand sculpts for them. And I also fabricate um, puppets and some puppet, de puppet department. Puppets are my life, <laughs> <laughs> day and night. And uh, so. That's a lot of fun. It's a completely different discipline. You know, we're, we're working in this scale and, and minute details, and they have to be pristine, and, and they're beautiful works of art in themselves. And they take, you know, we do this for years. You know, the film takes two and a half years to make. And yet, Leica is now in the process of, as they're doing films, ramping up and doing more, and we'll release a film a year, eventually. Mm -hmm. We hope. <laughs> yes. No, saying that all of those are pieces of art in themselves. Mm -hmm. You've got, I'm sure, a gazillion pieces for every film. What happens to all of those? Ah, um, lots of boxes. <laughs> 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 lots of wooden crates. Uh, they are... We, we do tend to um, make set pieces. Um, you know, we'll take parts of the sets and puppets and pose them and send them to exhibitions. Um, certainly Universal Studios, things like that. We'll just ship them pieces out around the world, but a lot of them are stored and put up in boxes. It's very sad. It's very All sad. the puppets are packed up. But after about, so it takes two and a half years, but about a year and a half of solid filming, these puppets, they're very broken. <laughs> we do fix them, we clean them up, they look good, but they cannot move in the same way they used to. Um, uh, but yeah, we, we do as much as we can with them. We keep, we keep the main characters around as much as we can. And we'll bring them out whenever we can. We still bring out Coraline and, um, and all those characters. Um, but yeah, we're trying to store them. Someday there will be a huge exhibit. It'll be amazing. <laughs> and it's worth seeing. I think they are amazing. How'd you come up with the story? Um, at the. I came up with the story, I think, really at the same time I became a father. It was the. It was the I, I sort of. I, I work in visuals, so I had some ideas that I wanted um, a character to go through a box into another land or in another place because that frees you up into doing anything. You could show anything 
inside the box or through a door. Um, it's a great Alice in Wonderland type trick. You know, you sort of go from one, let's take the audience on a journey to wherever. But at the same time, I became a father, and then I realized, well, I have to impart some sort of knowledge and wisdom to him. When as he grows up, and I have to teach him something, and I have no idea how to do that. But that's a really good idea, you know. And it's like, well, what do we do? We carry, we carry the baggage or the the lessons we've learned in life. We we go through trials, tribulations, anything um, that we experience, and we carry it with us, um, whether we like it or not. You know, we but we learn from it. We grow from it. We become better people, and we change. And that's the whole idea. But they do it physically. You know, you, you have a. a as we get older, you know, I feel like I have a bigger trunk, a uh, suitcase for me now than, than I did when I was younger, and that's that's sort of the feeling. That uh, I like the fact that they have these physical things that actually manifest as real lessons that you could see, that you could see in a certain way. And that they get a new box. And then they get a new box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it grows. I know that's the that was the. Goes in the new box. Yeah, <laughs> but it's really nice, you know, like that. It all it becomes this, you know. And, goes into this world and it's a file room. It's a dusty old file room full of all these strange boxes that have different things. So eventually it would be nice. I'd love to show more of the boxes in a certain way. You know, I mean you could show you could teach kids, you could teach people life lessons or le lessons or learning through a box. You know, through a lesson in a box. It's, it's a simple, wonderful thing to show someone. So I hope so. Questions. Do you plan or daily hope to revisit this one? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, if I can, I would. And uh, like I said, to teach kids, I would love it to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Never saw it. The question was: You talked about two people working each puppet. Mm -hmm. Do puppeteers tend to form two-person groups or teams tend to work together, or is it just? Um, a quick pick up and you're off together for the duration of the show. <laughs> That's actually no, it's, it's true. The yes, yes, a lot of the time, puppeteers and puppeteers who do certain puppeteering um, tend to work together a lot. Um, so I, I got people that I knew, some people that I knew worked together, and some people that didn't, um, hadn't worked before. Um, and it is fun to do both and have both. Yes, some people do work together all the time, and but it's rare. It's not necessarily always possible to do. Um, uh, especially these days on shows and things like that, you know, one person will get hired when, when things like that back and forth. Um, and, uh, and so when you put together, the, the most crucial part about it is having the rehearsal time for them to get to know each other in a, in a way that, you know, they know they're going to be close, they know they're going to have to move together, and so you get, you want people that can move, that can, so for the first day and a half of the puppeteers being in the room, they didn't have the puppets on, they acted it out as if they were the characters, and so you'd have, you'd have Todd, who was um, the boy, and, and uh, Alice, who was behind him the whole time, they'd be moving together like this around the floor, and she would be moving, and he would then, he would turn, like this, and she would have to turn with him, and then he would try and, you know, trick her out, and it was kind of funny. It was like watching this dance of people moving around together. Um, so that was a large part of the laughs in all those. Games. Oh, absolutely. Where he is yes. backing up. Yeah, because you've always got you've always got this, you know, thing like this. So, so he, you know, he's moving around like this, and the other guy's going. <laughs> And they're all trying to watch a monitor. You know, like, like they're running on the screen, so everyone's like turning their heads like this. And the race of Steve gets to be the front end of the horse. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it is, it is. It's that, it's that sort of, you know, who's going to lead and who's, who's going to follow and, and help and move. And it's a wonderful ballet. Mm -hmm. With just a touch of Marx Brothers. With just a touch of Marx Brothers. It's, it, that's the best part about it, is you know, you watch these things happen and, and the grace is happening up here and very subtle things and it's chaos down, it's just chaos. <laughs> um, when the boy is when the when Digby flips the red cloth and the boy pops up, mm -hmm. it looks simple. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like and that's it. 
um, there were there were nine people lined in a line along the floor. So there was a red fabric. There was the boy, which was two puppeteers, and there was Digby with four puppeteers, one for each arm and the red fabric, and Digby himself just lined up in a train. It was wonderful. I loved the chaos of that. <laughs> and just do it again and again and again. And it was um, so. People, the puppeteers form great relationships doing that, but they also find new ones and new people to work with time and time again. And it's hard to always find puppeteers. Um, I was lucky to find a certain amount of puppeteers that have done these sorts of puppets before, from the Muppets from Henson. But also to get new puppeteers that haven't necessarily worked in film, or you know they've done theatre puppetry, or marionettes, or different forms, and you bring their skill sets into it, and it's a great mix. So that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, oh, I saw uh, Box Trolls. It was really, really good. The sculpts were amazing. I did like the faces and the character shapes were just wonderful. Um, I was uh, curious, like how long uh, it took you to like kind of knock out a sculpt. Um. So there's a team of three sculptors. Um, usually, and then there's one, there's the maquette sculptor, who, his name's Ken Melton, who comes in early and does, like, figurative maquettes before, and then we do the puppets. So a puppet, I mean, will take anywhere from a week to two weeks, depending on who it is. Um, the end, the end creature thing, I won't ruin it for anyone, like, the, the end bit uh, for the film, um, that's, uh, that took a month of back and forth thing, the difference, because we had to do a lot of facial work um, to get that, that movement and different stuff, um, and a lot of body movement to make it. It's a, it's a big mass that has to move, because even though they're, they're this size, you know, you're this size and it's big. You know. So if you see the film, you'll understand when I say that. <laughs> um, and uh, we work with the rapid prototyping department. They work in the computers and then print out all these faces that they replace time and time again. So we do the original sculpts, mm -hmm. they scan them, and then we work with them to get them out, you know, and moving. Um, and we tend to do a lot of sort of um, facial sculpts to get expressions for them as well. So it's a great relationship. Um, we bicker a lot, we certainly do. <laughs> but it's, it's good for them. It really is. And the new film, when it can be released and told about, will be amazing. Blow everything else out of the water. So. <coughs> <laughs> Is there any other questions? How oh, much does it cost? So how, no, no. You go ahead. Ken. How many people did you have working on this piece total? Um, we don't know. Thirty-five to fifty. Uh -huh. Thirty-five to fifty people. Uh, we had a couple of box making days, so we had groups of people come on and make boxes and mm -hmm. things and it was it was absolutely wonderful to have that happen. Um, but yeah, I had a great crew at maximum of about thirty five people. Um, some of them were never there in the in the in the warehouse and some of them, you know, a lot of big group work. So that was exciting. That was really exciting to have creative people in the same place. That's the goal, to have creative people in the same building doing the same things together. Yeah. How much does it cost to fabricate a puppet like that? Um, I don't know. This, uh, so a puppet like this would probably be in material costs about around a thousand dollars, and then time wise, <laughs> um, time and experience, you have to pay the people. So yeah, a puppet, I, each puppet. Could potentially cost up to seven or eight thousand dollars, depending mm -hmm. on what happens yeah. and who you get and what you have. Um, or in my case, I have a lot of wonderful friends <laughs> <laughs> who did a lot of amazing work for free. <laughs> um, so next time around, it'll be a really expensive film. <laughs> really expensive film. No, it's it, you know it's the it's the people you get and the time that it takes to make them. Um, Materials-wise, you can go. Uh, Joanne's fabrics is great. <laughs> you know, the, stuff and the foam underneath is, but it's the it's the hands that do it. It's the best part about it. Yeah.